Hello and a warm welcome to all of you on this AWS Cloud Practitioner Real Exam Question and Answer Series. Let me directly jump to the very first question and then I will explain you how this entire series is planned so that you can make the best out of it. So here comes the very first question. Question number one says that which of the following is the definition of the cloud computing? Now friends, I could not find any other question best suited as the very first question of this entire series. Let me now tell you how this entire series is planned. So during this series, my friends, I will show you questions like this along with the possible options and you have to select the correct answer. So the best way to do is that you read the question along with me, evaluate all the options given, Pause the video, mark your answer and then once I reveal the answer, you match up your answer with the same. And always keep a timer with you because not only accuracy but the speed also counts during these kind of examinations. And please make a note that the cloud practitioner exam is 90 minutes and you would need to complete 65 questions during this exam. Out of these 65 questions, 50 questions would be scored and 15 others would be unscored. More information on the exam details, question format, how the scoring is done and how to create free AWS account is given in the episode number 1 and 2 of this series. Please check out both the episodes with the link shared in the description box. And one more subtle rule I want to make it very clear that during this series I will show you of course for some of the questions different variations of the question and why this is so important. Well in the real exam the same question can be presented in different formats to different exam takers. So this way you will be better prepared for the exam and top of that better prepared to really work on AWS. And secondly my friends there will be repetitions of the questions throughout the series but this is deliberate and by design. As it is scientifically proven that repetition helps you recall the answers in the real exam. And finally before we jump to the very first question I want to say that I will start with the basic questions and as we move ahead in the subsequent parts the level and the toughness of the questions will increase and of course I will give you loads of AWS official documentation to validate the answers and do some self-study and trust me friends by watching these videos you will learn so many concepts in AWS that not only you will feel prepared for the exam but also confident to work real time on AWS now coming back to the question I will read the question one more time to maintain the connectivity the question says that which of the following is the definition of the cloud computing and you're Options are Option A, rapidly develop, test and launch software applications. Option B, deploying applications connected to an on-premises infrastructure. Option C, running code without needing to manage or provision servers. And Option D is on-demand delivery of IT resources and the applications through internet with pay as you go pricing and the correct answer as per the AWS documentation is option D on demand delivery of IT resources and the application through the internet with pay as you go pricing. Let me jump on to the AWS documentation. So here in the documentation in the very first paragraph you can read that cloud computing is an on demand delivery of IT resources over the internet with pay as you go pricing and this is where we can be sure that our answer is correct and friends it goes without saying that links to all the documentation that I will be referring in this episode all are shared in the description box. Now let's move ahead to the question number two. It says what is the pricing model of the cloud computing? The first option is discounts over the time. The second option is pay as you go pricing. The third option is pay once a year and the last option is flat rate pricing. And the correct answer for this question is option B pay as you go pricing. And friends, I'm sure that you're paying attention because this question is derived from the definition of what is cloud computing that we saw in the last question. But nonetheless, if you really want to understand what is the concept behind pay as you go pricing, then this is the documentation. Here you can read in this section here, it says that pay as you go allows you to easily adapt to the changing business needs without over committing budgets and improving your responsiveness to the changes. And of course, you can click this hyperlink which says read more to come across this documentation. Here you can see that they have done a comparison between on-premises or co-location pricing model compared to the pay as you go pricing model in AWS. So here you can see that in case of on-premises or co-location, you still have to pay the price even if the resources are underutilized. But in case of AWS pay as you go pricing model, your costing will adjust to the demand of the resources or you can also say that your cost would be directly linked to the resource consumption. For example, if the resource consumption is low, then in that case, your costing will also be low. In case it goes higher, the cost will also go high. So I hope you understood the concept of pay as you go pricing model. 
Now let's jump on to the question number three, which says which are the three pricing fundamentals of the AWS cloud? And your options are option A, compute, storage and data transfer in the AWS cloud. Option B, compute, networking and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. And option C is compute, storage and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. And finally, we have storage functions and data transfer in the AWS cloud. And the correct answer for this question is option C, compute, storage and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. So let's validate our answer in this documentation. Here it says I'm reading just the relevant part. You can read all of the documentation. It says that in most of the cases, there is no change for the inbound data transfer or for the data transfer between other AWS services within the same region. And of course, there are some exceptions. So be sure to verify the data transfer rates before beginning. And then it says outbound data transfer is aggregated across services and then charged at the outbound data transfer rate. And finally, the documentation says that this charge appears on the monthly statement as AWS data transfer out. And that very line from the documentation validates our answer. Now, moving on to the question number four, it says, what is another term for on-premises deployment? Your options are cloud-based application, option B, hybrid deployment, option C, AWS cloud, and option D is private cloud deployment. And the correct answer for this question is option D, private cloud deployment. And just so you understand why other options are not correct. So coming to the cloud based application. So cloud based applications are fully deployed in the cloud and do not have any parts that run on premises. And then we have hybrid deployment. So a hybrid deployment connects the infrastructure and the applications between cloud based resources and the existing resources that are not in the cloud, such as on premises resources. And that's why my friends, a hybrid deployment is not equivalent to an on premises deployment because it involves resources that are located in the cloud. And now coming to the AWS cloud. So AWS cloud offers three cloud deployment models. The first one is called cloud deployment model or public deployment model. And the second one is on premises deployment model or also known as private cloud deployment. And lastly, we have hybrid cloud deployment model. Coming to the question number five, it says which of the following are benefits of migrating to the AWS cloud? Please note you have to pick two correct answers and the given options are option A operational resilience, option B discounts for products on amazon.com, option C business agility, option D business excellence and option E is increased staff retention. And the first correct option is option A operational resilience and the second one is option C business agility. Now let me brief you on both of these. So coming to the operational resilience, it says that the AWS cloud is designed to be highly available and scalable, which helps the organizations to improve their operational resilience and reduce the impact of business failures and disruptions. And then coming to the business agility, it says migrating to AWS cloud can help organizations to increase their business agility by allowing them to quickly and easily deploy new applications and services, scale their infrastructure up and down as needed and experiment with the new technologies. Moving on with the question number six, it says which of the following deployment models enables customers to fully trade their capital IT expenses for operational expenses and the options given are option A on premises, option B hybrid, option C cloud and lastly platform as a service. And the correct answer for this question is option C cloud. Let's move on to the question number seven. It says which pillar of AWS well architected framework refers to the ability of a system to recover from infrastructure or service disruption and dynamically acquire computing resources to meet the demand. Your options are security. Option B is reliability. Option C is performance efficiency and lastly cost optimization and the correct answer. Could you guess it? Well, it is option B reliability and friends do not worry. I will share the documentation on AWS well architected framework with the questions number 15 to 20 in the coming parts of this series and this will help you glue together all the six pillars of AWS well architected framework. So in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do it right away so that you get the timely notifications. Also friends, I want to say that I'm also certified in Microsoft Azure. So I will try to give you a comparison between AWS and Azure services wherever applicable. And this is very important because in real life, you won't be working on just one cloud. For example, I myself is working on multi cloud architecture that includes AWS, Azure and GCP. So that's why it's important for you also to understand the comparative services and the products between these both top cloud providers. And with that thought, let's move on to the question number eight. It says which of the 
following is an architectural design principle for AWS well architected framework and your options are build monolithic systems option B is loosely coupled components option C is scale vertically and not horizontally and lastly use third party software and the correct answer for this question is option B loosely coupled components and why so because loosely coupled components is a key architectural design principle of AWS well architected framework it involves designing systems so that the components are decoupled and can operate independently of each other and how does this help well this allows for great flexibility scalability and resilience and reduces the risk of cascading failures and of course my friends monolithic systems can be difficult to scale and maintain and are more prone to failures I hope you understood the concept of monolithic systems and loosely coupled components in monolithic systems all the components are very tightly coupled so in case you want to change one component it will definitely impact all the other components so that's why it's very difficult to maintain monolithic system and that's the reason the world is moving towards loosely coupled components moving on with the question number nine it says a company is planning to replace its physical on-premises compute servers with AWS serverless compute services the company wants to be able to take the advantage of advanced technology quickly after the migration. Now you have to tell which pillar of AWS well architected framework does this plan represent and the given options are option A security, option B performance efficiency, option C operational excellence and option D is reliability and the correct answer for this question is option B performance efficiency. And why exactly I'm saying this? See, this plan is to replace the physical on-premises compute servers with the AWS serverless compute services. So basically, we need to focus on improving efficiency and the performance of the company's computing resources. And that's why this migration is aimed at taking advantage of the advanced technologies quickly, which is the key aspect of the performance efficiency pillar of AWS well-architected framework. And friends, as I just mentioned, there will be loads of questions on AWS well architected framework, but I don't want to leave without any documentation. So here's the documentation that you can read and understand all the six pillars of AWS well architected framework. The first one is operational excellence. The second one is security. The third one is reliability. And the fourth one, which is also our answer is performance efficiency and cloud optimization holds the pillar number five. And finally, at number six, we have sustainability. Jumping to the question number 10, it says a company is migrating to the AWS cloud instead of running its infrastructure on premises. Which of the following are the advantages of this migration? Please note, once again, you have to choose two options. And the given options are option A, elimination of the need to perform security auditing. Option B, increased global reach and agility. Option C is ability to deploy globally in minutes. And option D is elimination of the cost of IT staff members. And lastly, option E says redundancy by default for all compute services. And the first correct answer is option B, increased global reach and agility. And second correct answer is option D, elimination of the cost of IT staff members. Moving on with the question number 11, it says which of the following are the three cloud computing deployment models? Your options are cloud based deployment models, virtual deployment model, on premises deployment model, zero cost deployment model and the last option E says hybrid deployment model. So the very first answer is option A cloud based deployment model. Then we have option C on premises deployment model. And lastly, the third correct option is hybrid deployment model. So let me give you the brief on each of these deployment models coming up the cloud based deployment models. What are the characteristics of cloud based deployment models? It runs all the parts of the application in the cloud. The second one is migrate existing applications to the cloud and thirdly design and build new applications in the cloud. Now moving on to the on premises deployment model. The first characteristics is deploy resources by virtualization and resource management tools. And the second one is increase resource utilization by using application management and virtualization technologies. And coming up next is hybrid deployment model. And here we have connect cloud based resources to an on premises infrastructure and secondly integrate cloud based resources with legacy IT applications. 
And friends, in the very next episode, I will take few questions that will be based on the real business cases where each of these cloud computing models will fit. And this will really strengthen your understanding on all the three cloud deployment models. And trust me, it's a core concept on which you must have a firm grip. Moving on with the question number 12, it says which of the following is not one of the five characteristics of cloud computing? Your options are rapid elasticity and scalability. The second option is multi-tenancy and resource pooling. The third one is dedicated support agent to help you deploy applications. And lastly, on-demand self-service. And the correct answer to this question is option C, dedicated support agent to help you deploy applications. So now let's move on to the question number 13, which says which of the following is not an advantage of cloud computing and your options are trade capital expense or capex for operational expense or opex option B is train your employee less and option C is go global in minutes and lastly stop spending money running and maintaining data centers and friends the correct answer to this question is option B train your employee less. So basically, this is not an advantage of cloud computing. And why do you think this is true? Because you still must train your employees so that they can use cloud computing more effectively. Now let's move on to the question number 14. It says which characteristics of AWS cloud helps the users to eliminate underutilized CPU capacity. Your options are agility. Option B is elasticity. Option C is reliability and lastly durability. And the correct answer for this question is option B, elasticity. And now let's move on to the question number 15. It says a company wants to create an application consisting of virtual servers, databases and networking components that are fully based in the cloud. Which cloud computing model suits this business case? Your options are cloud based deployment model. Option B is on-premises deployment model and option C is hybrid deployment model. And the correct answer for this question, of course, is option A, cloud-based deployment model. And this is because my friends, in on-premises deployment model, all the components of the applications will reside on-premises. But here in the question, we are talking about all the components being cloud-based. Similarly, in the hybrid deployment model, some of the components will be still on premises while the others will be cloud based. But here we are talking about 100% or fully cloud based. That's why cloud based deployment model is the correct answer. So friends, I'm really hopeful that you liked the first set of 15 questions in this series of AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. In case you have some suggestions or some questions that you want me to take in subsequent parts, please let me know in the comment section or you can also email me at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com. And finally, before you close this video, friends, please do not forget to like the video. After all, it's only your likes, my friends, that helps me grow and reach to the wider audience just like you. And in case, my friends, you're preparing for Microsoft Azure your AZ-900 certification, then you can watch the 765 questions on this exam series. This video on the left hand side will help you with that. On the other hand, if you want to deep dive in Azure concepts, this video on the right hand side is the right choice. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon so that you get the timely notifications of all our upcoming career building cloud videos. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.